Okay, let's start. Hello, everyone. Good to see you all in the GR seminar. Uh, today we have Dr. Xinyang An to give the last talk of this uh, semester. And Dr. Xinyang An graduated from Princeton University and now works in National University of Singapore. He has a deep study of hyperbolic PD and general relativity and made many excellent works in dynamics of black holes. Today, he will talk about low regularity, ill closeness for elastic waves and for MHD, uh, seems to drive by, driven by shock formation. Uh, let's leave time to Dr. Sinian and uh, welcome for his talk. Yeah, I would like to thank Professor Yao and the Jewish invitation. And also it is super happy to see uh, many old friends, especially James uh, here. So yeah, the talk is uh, for, for today, I will talk about a wave equation, especially for the quadrilinear wave system. This is talk about the low regularity e positiveness for two physical uh, quadrilinear wave system. One is elastic waves and another is the compressible MHD. So uh, the talk is based on joint work with uh, Dr. Chen Haoyang, who is a postdoc at NUS, and uh, Dr. Si Luyin, who is working at Hangzhou Normal University. So yeah, so yeah, so uh, yeah, in this talk, I will address two physical uh, uh, system with multiple wave speed. This would be quadrilinear wave system. The first uh, system is the um, elastic wave equations. This is also sometimes called the elasto, uh, described by in the uh, elasto dynamics. So the equation of the system uh, describes the motion uh, for the displacement of an isotropic homogeneous hyperelastic material. And uh, the equation from the quadrilinear hyperbolic system, uh, yeah, which is, we also call it, uh, elastic wave system. So this capital U uh, uh, is a vector valued function with U1, U2, U3. Each of them is a scalar valued unknowns. And uh, yeah, and we can see, uh, okay. And we can see on the right-hand side, there will be C1 and C2. And if we only look at the left-hand side, and if we take the divergence of the curl, so uh, we will have a wave operator with, uh, with wave speed C1 or, uh, or the wave operator with wave speed C2. So, uh, and also there will be the right-hand side on the left, uh, there, there will be nonlinear term. So the nonlinear term on the right-hand side will be uh, in the form of quadratic. It is more like, the gradient u times the second derivative of u. So um, from the physical consideration, so um, more precisely, and uh, uh, so we, we actually know quite well about what would be the structure of, of the nonlinear terms. It is of the following, uh, following type. So, uh, so here is sigma naught and sigma one would be some constant uh, 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 due to the uh, material. Okay, there will be some uh, nonlinear terms here. And the q is the standard, uh, uh, non form. So for this system one, and if under special requirement for sigma naught and the sigma one, so this equation one is proved to be uh, with for small initial data. So this system one is proved to be uh, there is global existence. So uh, yeah, so uh, in uh, 1999 by Sidarius and in 2000 by Jimmy, they proved the global uh, well postness for small data problem for this uh, system under special requirement for sigma naught and sigma one. So uh, there's more is in the uh, H6 norm or H in, in the uh, C infinity norm. So here in this talk, we will address the opposite side, which is we, 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 want, to un we want to understand the general without a re requirement for the sigma naught and sigma one, we want to address its low regularity e postness. So uh, in the second system we are considering is the 3D ideal compressible MHD. So uh, this is also a very physical uh, system. It's composed of the uh, OLAS equation and the coupled uh, Maxwell equation. Uh, it also formed a quadrilinear hyperbolic system. Uh, this is 3D ideal compressible MHD. And uh, yeah, we can see this will be the, uh, the OLA equation part, but there will be the magnetic field. And uh, uh, there's this equation is for the entropy. And that we also have for the uh, magnetic field, there will be divergence H is equal to zero. So the mu naught is a physical constant and the rho is fluid density. U is a fluid velocity. H is a 
magnetic, uh, magnetic field intensity as its entropy. So P is the pressure and uh, uh, yeah, as usual, so we require the equation of state, which is of the following form. And uh, so A is, um, uh, yeah, so here is, we require the A uh, is a positive constant and the gamma is also constant larger than one. So uh, MHD is very uh, related to astrophysics. So I, I did, did already also know this is a seminar for the general relativity. And I'm going to say that MHD is also uh, related to general relativity, also in a slightly different way. So yeah, so MHD uh, 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 plays a crucial role in many physical uh, uh, scenarios, especially in astrophysics, in the uh, planetary uh, mechanism and for the controlled uh, fusion uh, reactor. So let's look at this, a picture on the right hand side here. This is the picture for the structure of the sun. So uh, especially there is a zone called the convection zone. So for this, uh, in this region, the MHD play a dominant role. So yeah, so they use the compressor MHD to, uh, to do the analysis in this region and, and also the, 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 uh, the output of the simulation will play an important role for the other regions of the sun. And uh, uh, yeah, not only in for the stars and also, but in uh, even larger scale, let's say in the galaxy scale and or even in even larger scale. And uh, so even though this hasn't been addressed from the mathematical side, but in astrophysics and the people already uh, uh, address this with MHD. So let's say this will be for a um, equation disk, which is uh, around a super massive black hole. And, uh, uh, and there will be the um, MHD phenomena uh, involved. So this is also important for astrophysics. Okay, so yeah, so the mathematical question we want to ask is what would be the minimal amount of regularity required to ensure that for the system of elastic wave and for the MHD system to be local well posed in superwave norm, HS cos HS minus one. So yeah, so, so let's first uh, review the history for single wave equation. So there is a quite interesting history about a single quadrilinear wave equation. And uh, okay, so for the single quadrilinear wave equation in uh, R cross R3, so uh, this will be uh, the equations uh, uh, which we are interested in. And uh, this is a quadrilinear because the metric G depends on the unknown. And we will have the quadratic terms of the derivative on the right-hand side. So uh, this for this single uh, uh, equation, um, uh, so uh, in 2005, Smith and Tataru proved that this equation is local well posed for HS cross HS minus one. If the S is strictly larger than two, they use the wave package method to uh, achieve this. And then later, uh, Tian Wang uh, reproved this result with the uh, Euro vector field method. And uh, yeah, this is uh, their result. And then, um, so not only we can study the quadrilinear wave equation with this form, if we take an additional derivative, we can change this equation into a slightly different form, but the result can be changed over there. And uh, which is if we take additional derivative, the equation three can be changed into equation, equation five. And on the right hand side, so we will have the partial of the unknowns and the second derivative of the unknowns. So this is, uh, this is very similar to the elastic wave uh, 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 system, uh, uh, which is we just mentioned. So which means the equation one, which is at the level of the, um, uh, uh, the derivative, which is here. So yeah, so yeah, so later I will state the consistent result. Okay, so if we translate their result into such a form, so this we have the uh, HS uh, local well positiveness if S is strictly larger than three. This is for the positive side, which is local well positiveness. Okay, how about the negative side? So for the negative side, yeah, so which is uh, uh, very similar to, or very related to this form. So in 1998, so Limblad gave the sharp counterexample to the local existence for certain type of model equation, especially uh, he considered uh, the right-hand side would be the d psi times d squared psi. So this d is not a, a general a partial derivative. It will be of a special direction. This will be the incoming non-direction. So for this equation, yeah, yeah, Limblad uh, uh, can, con yeah, can construct now so-called Limblad type initial data. And he showed that for this uh, single wave equation, he showed that this, this equation will be uh, yield posed in uh, H3. So in the sense that he construct a family of initial data and uh, uh, in H3 now there is a parameter, okay, called this eta. So as eta goes to zero and uh, he can show that the, uh, the, H, the H3 cross H2 norm of the data goes to zero, but there will be instantaneous blow up. 
which means uh, if we measure the NH2 norm, the uh, uh, instantaneously for space, uh, for special regions, and there will be some H2 norms uh, blow up. Okay, this uh, uh, yeah, Limblad proved this result on the plan symmetry that was uh, in 1998. So uh, later, a student of Kleinerman, which is uh, Granowski, so uh, he, he proved that this Yopoznes mechanism actually, uh, yeah, this, this Yopoznes mechanism is stable out of uh, plan symmetry. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, he proved, uh, yeah, yeah, he first, yeah, he first showed that if we uh, do a small perturbation out of plan symmetry, so the eoposness will still be there. And moreover, he pointed out that the, uh, the, the blow up of the L2, the H2 norm, is very related to the shock formation. So uh, in our later slides, we will see that uh, it is indeed the shock formation which drives uh, the H2 norms uh, goes, to, uh, goes to infinity. So yeah, this is, uh, uh, but for both Mimbla's work and uh, Granowski's work, it is for a single wave equation. Okay, so how about uh, for the quadrilinear hyperbolic system? So yeah, we know that we have so many important uh, examples in physics yeah, system, the quadrilinear hyperbolic system. So the, the most well-studied ones may be the Einstein uh, equation, and in particular, the Einstein vacuum equations. So um, yeah, so in, yeah, so in uh, R3 plus one, so, um, so uh, uh, first, yeah, by uh, Kalenderman, Rodianski, and later uh, by Kalenderman, Rodianski, and Sheftel, they show that if in Sobolev norm, if S is larger than two in wave gauge, and also, also S larger or equal to two in young mills frame, they have the local well poseness for Einstein uh, vacuum equation. So, and the uh, yeah, and also uh, for Einstein vacuum equation in R3 plus one, yeah, as, yeah, I haven't uh, mentioned this is, yeah, both results are very important and this is a remarkable result with uh, the total proof would be more than 1,000 pages, it's really long and uh, you know, very technical. And uh, so- Sorry, uh, does oh, the first one not right. just follow from, from Smith to Taru? Uh, so no, they, I think this work may be earlier than Smith to Taru, roughly at the same oh, okay. time, maybe, yeah. maybe earlier, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So for Einstein vacuum equation in R three plus one. So we have another component which is also very important. So, so here is we have S is equal to two. Seems something special. And uh, for uh, in in R three plus one, there yeah, uh, for Einstein vacuum equation as H three half, three half is also a critical component. So this is the scale critical norm. So yeah, for the nonlinear PD, usually we have the philosophy, which is for the uh, scale critical norm, if it is small, so, so we will have global well postness. And if the critical norm is large, then we would expect there will be singularity formation. So uh, this kind of philosophy was uh, confirmed by me and uh, Jonathan Luke uh, in uh, 2017. So we indeed construct, uh, we, we find a stable phenomena, which is we construct the showing that if we uh, for the large H3 half norm, and this will indeed lead to uh, a very tiny trap surface formation and the further central similarity formation. And uh, so philosophically, this actually tells us that uh, we have uh, your postness, which is in H3 half norm, but this is the mechanism is because we have the kind of central singularity. So, um, but, th but there's a gap. We can see that there is H3 half and, uh, and, uh, H, uh, and H2. So, uh, so later, the Etting, uh, Ettinger and the Lindblad, they, um, they use wave coordinates. They construct, uh, under plan symmetry, they construct uh, your postness result for the Einstein vacuum equation. So, so now we know that um, besides H3 over two, at H2 level, there's also something interesting happen. And this is related to the local, uh, uh, your, which is uh, your postness for the local, uh, uh, local, uh, local well postness. Okay, this is for the Einstein uh, vacuum equation. We, we know that there is a, uh, a gap between the uh, H3 half, the critical component, and H2. And uh, yeah, similar things happened also for the Olas equation. So for the Olas equation in R3 plus one, yeah, so for Olas equation, we have the two very physical quantity, which is the velocity and the vorticity. So, and uh, if the initial data, we require that the uh, velocity if is in HS, uh, S is larger than two, so for the vorticity, it is also in HS, which, which as, as prime, as prime also larger than two, satisfy some technical uh, uh, requirement. And uh, uh, by uh, this, yeah, by this code, law, uh, Ma Zong spec, Qian Wang, and later reproved by uh, 
uh, Chang and Anderson. So the, uh, yeah, uh, so I didn't tell the difference, but uh, uh, especially yeah. So so here is I use the TMO three dot, but they prove something very related with each other. And uh, yeah, this shows that under this initial data, we will have the local well postness for the compressible OLAS equation. So so note that they also have the component two, which is similar to here. So and for the income for the incompressible case, and uh, which is um, in terms of the regularity of, of velocity, there is also the important uh, and also famous work by Bogun and Li, and uh, they yeah they use the the vorticity to construct uh, your Poisonous uh, uh, mechanism for the incompressible case. So if we consider the incompressible Euler's equation as special cases of the compressible uh, uh, equations, so we can also use this to consider as a kind of your positive result. So this, yeah, this result is somehow sharp related to the uh, vorticity. And uh, at a special case of our result here, so we, uh, yeah, so yeah, if for our MHD, we let H to be zero, we recover the uh, 3D compressible OLAS equation. And uh, so as a special case of our result, so here we proved uh, H2 uh, with respect to the velocity, your positiveness for 3D compressible OLAS equation. According to the above result, the, the your positiveness uh, result here will be sharp with respect to the velocity. So later I will give a picture to demonstrate for the OLAS, uh, OLAS scenario. So, yeah, and besides Einstein's equation and the OLAS equation, there would be also others interesting physical system. It would be the elastic wave and the compressible MHD equations. And uh, uh, so the opposing problem for this system uh, or for the Cauchy data was open. And uh, uh, in this talk, we answer these questions uh, uh, yeah, in this talk. So yeah, what would be the result? So which is, uh, if we consider the 3D uh, elastic uh, wave equation. So uh, we can show that uh, uh, this equation will be uh, yield posed in H3 cross H2. Yeah, so uh, note that for Nibelad's uh, uh, counter example, because we, we are using the second form, not, not, not with additional derivative. So for, for single wave equation, the so Nibelad's counter example is also at the H3 level. So all the results stated in this talk will be consistent with each other. So yeah, so we generalize Nibelad's kind of result to the system. So we construct a family of compact support uh, smooth initial data. So with eta as a parameter. So when eta goes to zero, so the size of the data shrinking to zero. And let T eta star, Will be the largest time. So for each of uh, for each of the data, which is when the first uh, singularity uh, happened, which I, we can we can prove that uh, uh, at that moment a shock form, and such that before that moment the solution will be uh, smooth. And uh, so as the eta goes to zero, we can show that the shock formation time shrinking to zero. It means we have the instantaneously shock formation. And uh, moreover, in a construct special region we can show that H2 norm of the solution to the elastic wave will blow up at the shock formation time. This is for the elastic wave. So yeah, so compare with Limblas result. So as I said, this is a generalization of uh, as a Limblas result. So which is for Limblas uh, case, which is for a single wave equation with a special, uh, little bit special requirement about the nonlinear terms. And the, but the scaling would be uh, 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 um, somehow consistent, which is for this equation. So we have the scaling critical regularity, which is H5 over two, and it is the same for the elastic wave equation. And uh, so uh, 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 the opposedness is at three, three level. And if the epsilon is, is uh, slightly larger than zero, we have the local well opposedness. So this uh, half gap is also observed for the Einstein uh, vacuum equation, which is uh, for the Einstein vacuum equation in R3 plus one, the scale uh, critical regularity would be H3 half. And uh, so we have the uh, H2 your positiveness in wave gauge and the H2 plus epsilon local well positiveness in, uh, in wave gauge. And we have the H2 local well positiveness in the young Mills frame by Kleinman, Rodiansky and Sheftel. So yeah, so as a generalization of Limla's sharp H3 your positiveness. Uh, so here is we generalize Limla's sharp uh, your positiveness from a single wave equation to the physical wave system. And the system is with multiple wave speed. And moreover, for both the elastic wave and the MHD, it is not strictly hyperbolic. So yeah, I will explain that later. So, but this is also yeah, something interesting and, and will bring us some additional difficulty. So yeah, so we, we also hope, yeah, as what do we say for the uh for the single wave, uh, single quadrilinear wave equation, we hope that the our H3 your 
for uh, elastic wave and also for MHD could also be sharp. The positive side hasn't been proved yet. Okay, so yeah, so uh, the equation one, what we just saw on the first page is we rewrite elastic dynamics or the elastic wave using Lagrangian coordinate. We can also rewrite everything using Eulerian coordinate. So this will be using the Eulerian coordinate of the system uh, of the elastic wave. So uh, yeah, so besides the, uh, 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 of, uh, besides the density and uh, velocity, there is another physical quantity, which is F. F will be a three by three metric valued tensor called the deformation gradient tensor. And the W here is some, uh, uh, it, it is related to the stored energy uh, function, uh, which is kept to the third order. So um, yeah, if we translate our result from the uh, Olarin, uh, uh, from the Lagrangian coordinate used on the first page into here. So our the H3 your coordinates will be transferred into a H2 your coordinates for uh, for this system. And uh, yeah, the H2 your coordinates will be consistent with the next uh, result for the MHD at which we will uh, state it. Okay, so this is, um, as I said, everything would be consistent with each other. So, okay, so for the MHD, so the next uh, result is for the 3D ideal compressor MHD. So we show that uh, the result will also be the opposed in H2 norm. So uh, it is in the same flavor. So we construct a family of uh, initial data and the initial data will shrink into zero and eta go to zero. And we will have instantaneously shock formation. And uh, um, so for each of the data, yeah, so yeah, so we will have, for each of the data, we will have a shock formation time. And at eta goes to zero, we will have instantaneous shock formation. And uh, so this is a strong your coordinates result. Namely, uh, we can show that uh, there is some certain norms um, blows up uh, instantaneously. So yeah, the blow up is in some L2 norm of certain physical quantity. Okay, so yeah, so let me try to explain uh, what would be the scenario like. So this is a picture for the MHD. So uh, yeah, later we will see that for the, the one of the key difficulty for both elastic wave and for MHD is we we will have the multiple wave uh, speed, which is the uh, so for the MHD, uh, yeah, we will see that the all all these there are some quantities they travel with different wave speed. They can travel uh, using seven different wave speed. Not in general relativity, we only have the speed of light, but but even though we have a system, but for general relativity, we only have one speed. But for the uh, both elastic wave and MHD we will have multiple wave speed. So, and uh, in particular, so uh, we will have the uh, so R one and two R seven. But the difficulty is coming from there will be two uh, uh, quantities uh, and actually four quantities. Let's say W two and W three. So their wave speed are almost the same. So they are slightly different, but they are very close with each other. So this means. The, the, for the W2 and the W3. So their nonlinear interaction could last for a long time. And this is somehow, yeah, this is the called, so-called non-string hyperbolic. Yeah, later I will give a more precise definition, but physically uh, speaking, so it is because the different waves can interact for a long time, it will bring the difficulty. And similarly for the, uh, in for W5 and W6. And the way we control the, this is one of the difficulty. The way we control the dynamics is um, we need to divide the space-time region really careful. And we need to design the argument to uh, according to the different kind of regions. So yeah, so we, we, we use R1, R2, uni R3, R4, R5, uni R6, R7 to be the, uh, the, the gray region, which is we, we, we try to understand the dynamics within the gray region. And there will also will be the light gray region. So the solutions in this light gray region is not zero. And um, yeah, and the, but the argument, but the way to control norms in this region will be uh, quite different from the way we control the things within the uh, characteristic strips. And also there will be a region, all the waves coupled together and the argument over there is also different. So uh, what we want to show that is, um, so we want to show that there will be a time which is uh, T eta star. So this will be the first point, first time a singularity form. And this is precisely a short form, which is before this moment, there's, there's no singularity. And actually we know that at this moment, besides uh, exactly this point, all the solutions remain smooth. So yeah, we understand the dynamics before T, uh, T eta star very well. And uh, it is only within the uh, R1. So we will have a short form at this point. 
So all the other things will be well controlled. Yeah. So even for the shock, can control quite precisely about the things. Okay. So this is the goal we want to prove. So yeah. So uh, yeah. For the uh, uh, other remark, which is if for us, let's say H to be zero. So our MHD system reduced back to the 3D compressible OLAS equation. And that, yeah, this is the uh, system we reduced to. Uh, we, we allow in the non-trivial uh, entropy and non-trivial vorticity. So yeah, our results imply that this, uh, this physical system, 3D compressible OLAS system, will be H2 your post uh, for the, yeah, will be H2 your post. So, okay. So yeah, so, so um, if we restated everything in the more, in the more um, mathematical world, so we, 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 can, we have the same uh, similar uh, result like what we just previously uh, see before. So we construct the family of initial data and as it goes to zero, the data goes to zero, but we will have instantaneously shock formation. So which is uh, as t goes to, and it goes to zero. So the shock formation time will shrink into zero and some each one norm will blow up. So the next picture will be something interesting, which is uh, compare with Previous work, what do we what do we get? So this is the picture uh, which is uh, I, I stated here. So the, for the three D compressible OLA uh, OLA equation, the classical result stating that if for the velocity and also for the density and rho, if the s is larger than five over two, then we will have the local well postness. And because we can think about the vorticity to be a derivative of velocity, so the classic local well postness will be covered in this region. So this is the, uh, for s, which is regularity of, of velocity, this is for the regularity of the vorticity. So this region was covered by the classical result. We know there is a local well postness. And, uh, um, and uh, the a very recent work by Qian Wang and also um, by the other groups, they, uh, they, they proved that the, the local well postness in this region. Okay, so, um, so um, and the, the, the darker gray region, it is still uh, uh, not proved yet, not fully proved yet. This is a conjecture to be true. And the Bougainville's uh, 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 the quite famous example, for the incompressible case, is they, they show that along this solid line, we will have the your postness. And this is your postness is respect to the, uh, which is the, the key mechanism is from the vorticity. And this will, yeah, uh, yeah, we expect that this to be the sharp your postness uh, for, uh, for, for, uh, for, for this side. So the result we just stated, joined with Hao Yang Chen and Slu Yin, we proved that we have the your postness for this uh, solid line. So this is from the uh, three half to uh, to infinity. So yeah, so uh, yeah, so uh, so which means um, if we consider this picture, so our result will be uh, sharp respect to the regularity of velocity. So together with uh, uh, Bougainville's uh, your postness, so we think that we have uh, somehow a, a relatively clear picture about what would be the your postness mechanism. Expect that uh, there will be sm a small region haven't proved yet about the local well postness uh, part. Okay, so this is for the 3D compressible OLA case. Okay, so yeah, what would be the approach like? So, uh, so similar to Limla's work, so we we will for to construct your postness, we will work on the plane symmetry. So, uh, yeah, so we use x1 to denote, uh, we use x to denote x1. So we, yeah, so u is a, a fluid velocity. So this will be a, a scalar uh, it's a vector value function. We have the u1, u2, u3 will be scalar value function. So for the elastic wave system on the plane symmetry, so yeah, so the equations what we just saw is translated into such a system. But uh, there is immediately some difficulty we can uh, observe, which is this uh, system is coupled at the top order, which means if we look at the first equation, this will be the second derivative uh, wave operator hitting on U1. But on the right-hand side, we will have the second derivative of U2 and the second derivative of U3. And similarly, for the second or the third equation, even though this is the equation for U2 and U3, on the right-hand side, we will have the second derivative of U1. So this is a system coupled uh, at the top order. So this will give us the, uh, make the system to be quite hard. Okay, so yeah, so uh, later we will treat this uh, system um, as a six by six first order hyperbolic system uh, with top order coupling. Okay, so yeah, the MHD system will be even larger. So if for the MHD system, uh, we we work on the plane symmetry. So by the Gauss laws, H1 is always a constant. So uh, the, the 
the other physical unknowns will be a seven physical unknowns listed here, and this satisfies MHD uh, MHD equation. So yeah, so this gives us a seven by seven first order hyperbolic system. So uh, in our talk, yeah, so both. Uh, yeah, yesterday we will be six by six, this will be seven by seven. So in this talk, so we will combine a geometric approach and then uh, a relatively new algebraic approach to, to deal with the system and to, to, uh, to, to do the analysis of the dynamics of the solution. Okay, so yeah, so let's have, yeah, some remark about the uh, geometric approach and the algebraic approach. So about the geometric approach. So geometric approach uh, was used to study a single wave equation. And uh, yeah, so we have a quite rich literature about the uh, single wave equation. So uh, this was uh, first done by, yeah, there is some previous works, but uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, in, uh, in uh, 2007, so Cristolo gave a quite a detailed geometric description, description about shock formation. And uh, yeah, he did this for the 3D compressible relativistic OLAS equation. Uh, which is irrotational and anisotropic. And then later, this result was generalized to uh, quite uh, 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 different settings and scenarios. In particular, in a work by Luke and Speck, they uh, generalized this result for the compressible OLAS equation, and they allow the non-trivial uh, vorticity. So this will be con can be considered as a single wave equation coupled with a transport equation. So, and, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, in another work by, uh, by Speck, so Speck try to uh, using this geometric approach to uh, prove shock formation for a wave system with two different wave operators. So yeah, so for Speck, he allowing for different wave speed for the system, but unlike the elastic wave or the MHD, so for the system, uh, uh, Speck can uh, uh, can prove is there's no top order coupling, which is the coupling is somehow at a low order. And um, yeah, and that's the job, yeah, he, he proved that the geometric approach, uh, which is can be used to say that there is the shock formation for the for this system. And quite recently, the Buckmaster uh, scholar and the Rico, they develops uh, a different approach we are self-similar variables to prove shock formation for compressible OLAS equation and allowing for the non-trivial vorticity. So yeah, so yeah, yeah uh, 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 a small review about what is the geometric approach like. So uh, give the, yeah, we consider the, the easiest example, which is for a single quadrilinear wave equation, which is like this. And if we take the additional derivative, the equation 12 will be changed into equation 13. And uh, yeah, this is a quadrilinear and the metric G will depend on the unknown. And on the right hand side, this is related to the, to the non form. So, so uh, yeah, as what we did, uh, we can define the, the non frame, which is L and L bar tilde at the suitable incoming and outgoing non frame. And uh, so we, uh, yeah, initiate from maybe even earlier than Cristolo, but Cristolo used it actually. So we define the inverse uh, foundation density. So this is the geometric quantity. And uh, this quantity describes the compression of the non hypersurfaces and the vanishing of the mu, which is at a point, if mu is zero, then we know that a shock uh, form at that space. 10 point. So we can use uh, uh, mu, I mean, to rewrite the system, which is either this one or, or, or this one, and this will be the system. So this is a coupled system. As we can see that the mu is here, but the mu is also, we have the transport equation to transport equation for mu. If we spend a little bit of time, so for, uh, yeah, for constructing the initial data, we can show in that, yeah, by using transport equation, we can show in that the mu, uh, we can control the dynamics of mu quite well, which is mu it will be roughly like one minus uh, quantity times t. And in particular, if this quantity is chosen to be positive, and we know that within finite time, and the mu will go to zero and the shock form. So this is the geometric approach, which is we try to follow the evolution of mu to understand at which point uh, shock uh, forms. And uh, yeah, okay, let's see. And what would be the diff yeah, so what would, what would be the difficulty if we want to generalize this approach to the uh, system, not a single wave equation? So this will be a general quadrilinear wave system with quadratic nonlinear terms. Okay. And uh, yeah, this um if we if, if we take the additional derivative and this equation can be translated into a more geometric form, which is here. So as we can see that the uh, yeah, so in general, the right hand side we have the top order coupling. Namely, even though that this is an equation, uh, for, this is for the Poisson 
I. So this is for the comp yeah for the Poisson I. Even though this is uh, we've operated hitting on the Poisson I, so we will have the second derivative of Poisson K here. But this is a top order coupling. So the cases uh, uh, spec can deal with using the geometric method is he can deal with this system, which is we do not have this one. And if we do not have the top order coupling using the geometric approach, yes, yeah, spec can show in that uh, still can show can show that a uh, shock form. But uh, but the old because of this kind of new terms, the old geometric approach actually fail because we will have the loss of derivative issues here. Okay, and uh, and besides the geometric approach for this single uh, quadrilinear wave equation, we also have a different approach, which is a uh, an algebraic approach. Uh, because yeah, this is a. Uh, uh, we can rewrite this as a two by two system. So we have the remaining variance, which is, so based on this equation, we uh, define a V1 and a V2 to be two, uh, two, two, two new unknowns. And the equation 16 can be translated into a two by two hyperbolic system. So note that for this one, so this is a strictly hyperbolic system, namely the eigenvalues actually, uh, uh, both, both eigenvalues uh, will be, uh, so, uh, it will be real and they will be distinguished uh, 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 with a complete set of eigenvectors. So this is nice, uh, strictly hyperbolic system. So uh, yeah, giving a, a strictly hyperbolic system, which is two by two and usually, uh, not usually, but people believe that we can always construct the suitable remain invariant, and which is namely in such a way, this is W1 and W2. And uh, so W1 and W2 together will give the following diagonal transport equation. So yeah so, uh, yeah, so because this is only a transport equation for W1, a transport equation for W2, everything can be uh, analyzed quite uh, nicely. And, but this is a nonlinear, the price we pay is this it will be a nonlinear form of, uh, of the way. Okay, and uh, yeah, and using this, uh, we can see that based on uh, equation 18, we can see that the partial derivative of W1 and the partial derivative of W2, both of them will satisfy a Riccati type equation. And if we pick the limit type initial data, yeah, we can see that we will uh, have the Boulogne point. point. And, uh, and if we uh, translate into the geometric language, we can see that this also will give us the, the uh, inverse Fourier density to be zero. And this is also give us the shock formation. So which means for a single, what very simple one plus one, uh, quadrilinear wave equation, we have at least two ways to talk about the shock formation. So, uh, but additional difficulty is for the classic algebraic approach, which is, it is really based on the constructing of explicit remain invariant. And, uh, and also, yeah, and also you really use them for a uh, 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 genuine nonlinear strictly hyperbolic system. And, but this is heavily relies on, this is a two by two first order system. But what we will face is for the elastic wave is a six by six system and the MHD is a seven by seven system. It is, uh, it would be super hard to construct a suitable remain environment which can describe all the dynamics of all these kind of waves. So we need to use a different approach. So, so yeah, the approach, what we will adapt is the following. So yeah, so for elastic wave, so we will have, this will be the unknowns. We rewrite it into a six by six system. And then for the uh, 3D ideal uh, compared to MHD, we rewrite it to be a seven by seven system. So yeah, so it is for this system, it is very hard to construct the proper remain variant. So, um, so we, we use a different approach from, uh, yeah, which is, mm, we use a different algebraic approach, which is we use the decomposition uh, of waves. Let me see, okay. So let me put a small history here. So. Yeah, so this is uh, not actually, um, this is also a classic method, but somehow um, not, well, not very well kind of, uh, well, not, not well, very widely used. So the decomposition of wave kind of method was introduced by Fritz Strong in 1974. And after his work, there, is, there, there are not much follow-up works. And it was until 2015. So Cristolo and his postdoc Paris, uh, 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 somehow in polished uh, Fritz Jones uh, uh, method and to study um, a strictly hyperbolic system, which is a four by four system coming from the nonlinear crystal optics, they prove the shock formation. And uh, so for us here is we generalize Cristolo and the Paris approach to the non-strictly hyperbolic system, which is even larger for the elastic wave and for the MHD. And then moreover, not only the shock formation result, we also proved the yield, the sharp, yield, yeah, the, the yield positive result for this system. So, okay, and some remark for the system. So for the elastic wave, uh, which is, we already saw that we have the top order coupling, 
in the elastic waves, and uh, we will have the non strictly hyperbolicity. Means for the six by six coefficient metric, we will have six eigenvalues, but two of them, uh, two pairs of them, will be very close with each other. So, yeah, so, so in, in the region we are considered, the unknowns will be close to zero. But if, if Poisson is phi is zero, we have the lambda three and lambda four will be the same. Lambda five and lambda five will be the same. This uh, related to something in degenerate. And also, moreover, we want to prove a strong Yopoldness result, which is uh, instantaneously some H2 number follow up. So remark for the uh, uh, compressible MHD. So yeah, we have something similar. This we have seven eigenvalues. Two pair of them will be very close with each other, and uh, uh, compared with elastic wave, so the system for the compressible MHD will be even more subtle. So uh, we need to explore the structures of MHD system to be uh, explore more structures and compare with uh, elastic wave, and we also want to prove the strong uh, poisonous. Okay, and. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the main steps. So uh, yeah, for our work, so the main step, yeah, we, uh, we, we do five steps to, to do this, which is we first formulate uh, the elastic wave of the MHD into a first order quasi-linear hyperbolic system. And the second part is a quite tricky part, which is uh, due to, uh, which is conditioning back to the free strong. But uh, from compared with free strong and also compared with crystal Paris, the decomposition of waves will be more subtle here because we uh, we have the yeah because the system will be harder. So yeah, so later I will, I will address this more. And there is there's the, uh, the the way to do the, the wave decomposition is not unique, and it is really crucial is which one which way of the wave decomposition we we adapt and uh, and we find the the correct one somehow. And the, for, for the MHD, we find the lucky one and the, can make the system, can make the argument work. And, the, and then we, like at Euro for the hyperbolic PDE, we established the upper estimate and bull trap argument. And, the, and we, we studied the dynamics and showing that there is the shock formation and using shock formation, we further prove the your uh, uh mechanism. Okay, so let's see. So we first uh, reformulate everything using the first order hyperbolic system. And for elastic waves, this will be the uh, eigenvalues. We have six eigenvalues. And, uh, yeah, and A and B related to some physical constant or also related to the unknowns. If, uh, yeah, so as, yeah, and uh, this is non strict hyperbolic means and if the, the, the if, if C and D uh, would be if the solutions uh, phi two phi three to be zero, lambda two and lambda three could be the same, and similarly for lambda four and lambda five, and uh, yeah, so for the elastic wave, so we can we then can calculate what would be the like left eigenvector and it would be the right eigenvector. So there is only one requirement we, we when we do the construction, we only require that the the uh, the inner product between the L i and the i j to be the Delta ij. So this is if i and j is equal to the same, it's one. Otherwise, it will be zero. But we have so many freedoms to choose. Uh, even under this condition, we have so much free freedom to choose which would be the li, which would be the ij. And uh, after uh, spend time of the trying for the elastic wave, we choose the proper right eigenvector. So um, yeah. So this is also subtle because if we put a different function, we can have a different pair, but it will give us different results. And uh, for this kind of truth, we can later we will see that we have the nice result. So yeah, this is, uh, yeah. And this will be the uh, right eigenvectors we have. Okay. And, uh, and for the MHD, so the situation will be uh, even more subtle. So we will have seven uh, eigen, uh, uh, eigenvalues. And uh, so the, the, the CF, CA and the CS are corresponding to the fast, the often, and the slow wave speed in the MHD literature. So yeah, so our system is also not strict hyperbolic. So when H2 and H3 to be zero, we have these two. A lambda two is equal to lambda three, and lambda five equals to lambda six. So compared with elastic wave, the difficulty is, so for, for, for elastic wave, after the trying, we are confident that we find the right eigenvector and the argument should, should work. But for the, for the you know, MHD, so later we will see that uh, so we, even though that we already have experience about what would be the suitable right eigenvector and the left eigenvector, so we can we still need to do an additional renormalization. And with the additional renormalization, we still have uh, two hundred and ninety nine terms to check to make sure that there is a a, a potential single, single, singular term because 
H2 and H3 could be very close to zero. We need to make sure that there would be some coefficient and then we need the coefficient to be of order one to do the, uh, to, and then we explore the nonlinear structures. We need to make sure that the coefficient to be of order one. And but this factor can pop up for each of the coefficients. And then we calculate, yeah, we, we calculate all these terms and make sure that all these coefficients uh, uh, are not there. And, uh, uh, and furthermore, we find some additional structure, which is a coefficient. I, yeah, these terms are always, uh, uh, we always accompanied, accompanied by a factor like this one, which is the cancel with one or a fact, uh, which is there will be two terms cancel exactly with each other. So, okay. So now what would be the coordinate we use? So, yeah, so we use uh, the, yeah, like for the hyperbolic system. So we use the characteristic coordinate, which is starting from initial data ZI. So uh, if we follow the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the characteristic, so we, we solve the OTE and we have the ZI and the T, and this is the point we use the ZI and the T at the, as a coordinate. And, uh, and uh, because we need to do the analysis of the nonlinear interaction for different family of characteristics, so and, uh, we need to also use to another coordinate called the bicrystic coordinate. We use this uh, a lot. So bicrystic coordinate is, uh, so this is a point which is using the characteristic coordinate. But if we, uh, con if we consider uh, a geodesic, which is considered a characteristic, which is along, which is within the CI family, and we will have the initial data, which is YI. And similarly, starting from this point, if we consider the, the C, CG family, this back into the data, which is YG. So this point, can we also see that we have the coordinate, which is the YI and the YG. So yeah, we use this coordinate a lot in, in the proof. So yeah, and then now we define the feasible quantity we want to study. We, we write everything into the, um, uh, into a different system. Yeah, so the first one is something a little bit familiar to us, which is this is the inverse uh, density of the ice characteristic. So this is like the mu, what we just saw in Crystallos and others work. And, but this is because we have quite a few different uh, uh, waves, because there's waves. For each of them, we need to define a mu i, we call it rho i. So rho i is defined to be such a quantity. So this rho i plays the role of the mu, which is in the geometric approach. The vanishing of the rho i means that within the CI family, there is a shock formation. And besides of rho i, we also need to define uh, another two families of unknowns, we will be the w i and the, the, the v i. And uh, uh, yeah, this is defined here. So um, yeah, so yeah, so, so we, yeah, so we then rewrite the elastic wave and the MHD system using this, uh, using this unknowns, okay? And then rewrite with this three, uh, three kind of family of unknowns, what's back to the first draw. So which is, uh, yeah, so uh, the, yeah, the next page is, is, is what would the system like if using these unknowns. But uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, yeah, so the, the way to using these this three families of unknowns to rewrite the system was back to the first strong and sharpened by the crystal of Paris for the strict hyperbolic system. And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, but for here, we generalized this approach for the non strict hyperbolic system and also studied the opposites. Okay, so what would be the, so what, what, what would be the system we need to deal with? And uh, yeah, so using this uh, rho i, w i, and the v i, so we will have the following system, which is uh, for the WIs. So we will have the system, which is which here. So there are many very important nonlinear structures uh, here. So for example, so we will consider the equation for W1. So the W1 will, will be the only quantity which is blow up at short formation time. All the other red quantities will be bounded. So we will have a Riccati type terms here. And the, the dot dot, the key thing is there is no W2 times W3 or W4 four times W5. Because W2 and W3, they travel with almost the same speed. The, the, interaction, the non interaction could be really large. And the lucky, uh, so we are lucky that we do not have this term. But the, let's say for the coefficient, for the equation for the W2. So uh, we're not that lucky. So we have the W2 times W3, W5, W4 times W5, but we have the small factor which is in front of them. So uh, yeah, so which means there is a small coefficient in front of here. And later we will see, this also plays a very important, a crucial role to the analysis. And yeah, there are also other structures. And, and similarly, uh, for the VIs, we also have some structures we need to we need to use. And also this will be the uh, just structures for the for the row eyes. Okay. And um, so this will be the strips, what we will, we will try to understand, we will try to understand. We will show that the, the row one 
which is, uh, yeah, we will show that, uh, yeah, the row one is really something quantitative that we are really interested in. So we will show that within the R1, the row one initially will be positive and the row one will, will go to zero within R1. But outside of R1, all this row one has a positive lower bound and also positive upper bound, which means, uh, which, and similarly for, for other row eyes, this means the only, uh, un the, the only shock formed is within the R1, and there's no shock formation for the other space, uh, space time region. And, uh, and this shock formation will also give us the blow up of W1. We need to use this blow up of W1 to see that the H2 norm, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, which is, uh, yeah, all, 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 yeah, H2 norm blow up in a space time region. Okay, let's see for the MHD. So the MHD system uh, is uh, even more subtle. So let's say for the WIs, so not only we have the Riccati terms, we indeed will have the W2 times W3 term, but there is a small factor over here. And similarly for the W5 and W6. So all the, all the uh, blue terms will be the, somehow the different term compared with elastic wave. So we have the different structure. And similarly for the VIs and for the rho eyes. So this page explains why MHD will be subtle, even more subtle compared with the uh, elastic wave. So yeah, okay. So the okay. So uh, the, the argument we need to do is uh, we there is some coefficient we didn't write down. So the important thing is we need the coefficient to be of order one. So all this of, of order O one, and thus we can uh, derive the upper bound. Okay, and we need to use the factor. Uh, so so uh, yeah. So. Um, all the factors we didn't uh, write down will be of order uh, of order one. So for elastic wave, it is uh, let's say for elastic wave, it is not very difficult to prove that the coefficient we didn't write down will be of order one. So this gives required maybe two or three pages. But for the elastic wave, we do not have such a proof. So so uh, yes, yeah, so as we will see very soon, it is uh, very subtle. So we need to we need to check many terms to make sure that all these terms are of, we didn't write down of order one. So this is related to how to choose the uh, right, uh, left eigenvector and the right eigenvector. So, so for example, from the experience, uh, from our experience to study the elastic wave. So for the MHD, so a natural, uh, yeah, to construct some coefficient. So yeah, I, I, didn't, um, I didn't specify which one. So for example, maybe this one. Yeah, yeah, may, yeah, maybe, yeah maybe this one. So this is not very precise, but let's see. So to construct, to calculate this coefficient, we need to calculate, let's say, gamma 64, two, okay? And, uh, and, uh, and this is defined to be, uh, to be here. It's, it's involved the left eigenvector and the, the derivative of the right eigenvector. So from our experience for the, uh, for the elastic wave, this is our initial construction. So this will be the right eigenvector. Correspondingly, we will have the, the left eigenvector. And uh, yeah, and, but if we check, yeah, they, they, are, they are under this requirement. But if we check the coefficient, we will have something really bad. And uh, this will give us a quantity, which is, which is here. This is not of order one, because for us, both H2 and H3 could be very close to zero, and they are not related with each other. So this is not uniformly bounded. And if this is the case, uh, let's say if you have such a coefficient in front of the terms here, we cannot control the things like what we want. We really need this coefficient to be of order one. So the way to do it is we need to do the additional renormalization, but this is kind of a risky one, which is we, we uh, but this will introduce a potential this type of singularity with both H2 and H3 to be very close to zero. So this red terms will be the renormalization we did. So we noticed that this will be, this could be a singular term, so which is, uh, yeah. So in, 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 all, in both of the work of Fritz Strong and the Crystal of Paris, so, and even in the even uh, uh, larger literature, usually when they do the wave decomposition, they require the left argon vector and the right argon vector to be of order one. So here is, we I want to say that in our work, for the MHD, so we re re relax this kind of requirement. So the left icon vector could be not of order one. Still, that we can get the desired result. This is kind of re relaxation of all the previous works. So okay, let's say so. This is our um, the left icon vector. We, we we require the right icon vector to be of this form. And for this time, let's redo the calculation. And the, yeah, so because of this kind of factor, so poten uh, potentially, so we may have this kind of similar terms everywhere. And, the, and the, uh, by doing the calculations, yes, which is involved in the product with the gradient of this red eigen vector. So luckily uh, we will have the sum of two terms. So 
So not only each of them will be bounded by uh, by O1, there will be some additional cancellation, which is this will gives a uh, uh, gives a one. This will be uh, yeah. This is a good coefficient. And uh, another typical type of calculation is once you have such a term, you can always find a negative term to cancel it. So uh, by doing this, we checked uh, almost three hundred terms to make sure that all the coefficients we didn't write down will be of order one. So this is additional difficulty coming from the MHD part. Okay, so so yeah, so now, uh, which is now yeah, which yeah, this will be the suitable kind of doing the wave decomposition, and then we do the bootstrap of certain physical quantities. So we named a few, and uh, we want to do the analysis within the strip and outside the strip, and uh, this is uh, okay. And um, so uh, the way we do it is uh, so there will be some moment which is before this moment, all the waves are coupled together. And after that moment, all these waves can be somehow try to, can be quite separated. We need to do the analysis before and after uh, this, uh, this moment uh, separately. And uh, yeah, this will be for the, uh, for the MHD. For the MHD, this will be the quality strips. And we want to show that a shock formed within R1. So yeah, this will be, for the MHD, there will be the quantities because the additional difficulty of the MHD. So the argument we need to do for the bootstrap argument, we need to do slightly different. So there, for the MHD, we have stronger kind of interaction terms. So we need to modify the, argu the, the, the argument uh, yeah, uh, uh, a little bit. So the conclusion, what is the conclusion? The conclusion is, uh, let's say for the MHD, for example, which is uh, for row i, which is i is not equal to one. So for all the row i's in, in the host space, yeah, in the host space time region before, the, uh, include, even in, including T is, uh, uh, T is the star. So all the other row i's, they are uniformly bounded away from zero, which is they are positive. There's a lower bound from, uh, from below. And this is also uniform bounded from above, which means for all the other row i's, there's no shock formation. And uh, the row one, which is uh, quantities we are particularly interested in, and um, uh, um, and we um, yeah, all side of our, our one, so the, the row one will obey a positive lower bound outside of R, R1, but within R1, uh, so the row one will goes to will shrinking to zero as T goes to this shock formation time. And this is the first singular uh, moment, which is a shock formed because uh, row R actually really seeing that the shock actually forms within the CI family. Okay, and then the VI, uh, yeah, so in the whole space time region, we are, we are, we will be uniformly bounded in the whole region. And then, so the WI, so the WI, if I is not equal to one, all the WI, W2 to W7 will be uniform bounded in the whole, in the whole space time region. And uh, the W1 uh, outside R, R1, the, w, the W1 will be also uniform bounded, but within the R1, W1 is only quantity, uh, which is blow up at this, at this point. And uh, it, it blows up at exactly the, the same moment and the time at the shock formation. So yeah, so this is W1 go to infinity and time approaching to the shock formation time. Okay, and uh, yeah, I want to mention a little bit about uh, why the coefficient will be important. So uh, yeah, so as what we already saw that when, the, when we derive the equation, uh, there will be some important small factor in front of the nonlinear term. And this, uh, yeah, the way, the reason why we, we need this is we use the bi coordinates a lot, which is in order to, to control the, uh, the, the row two, we need to, uh, uh, translate this coordinate back to, yeah, we need to translate this one into the bicrest coordinate. So this bicrest coordinate itself for the non-strictly hyperbolic system could be singular. So that it also will be the reason why the people before us, like for the first John or for the Cristolo Paris, they, they deal with the strictly hyperbolic system, which is when they do the bicrest coordinate change, there's no additional Singularity, but because lambda two and lambda three could be very close with each other, this gives a small divider, and this coordinate chain could be singular. And the way we can still proceed using bicoordinate coordinate is because precisely because we have additional factor here. And uh, so if if we do the integration using bicoordinate, so we will so this yeah do the coordinate change, we will have this potential uh, singular term in the denominator, but because we have the small factor here and they are canceled out. So we can find everything of order one. So which means every time, yeah, so this is not for one places, 
we use, we, we need to check the coefficient here. We need to use this everywhere in the paper. And that this is due to the structures what we just derived uh, in the previous slides. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and also we can, we can control the row one in a very precise way. And then we can show that the row one with both uh, lower and upper bound. So, so the, w, uh, the W naught is the initial data we construct. And uh, within this both and the lower bound, so we know that within the time T eta star, which is bounded by these two bounds, the rho i, rho one will go to zero. And this gives the shock formation time, which is bounded by this way. And uh, for the family of data we choose is at eta go to zero and uh, W not eta go to infinity. So this renders that the shock formation time will shrink to zero as eta go to zero. So the last slides uh, will talk, will assume that so why we coined that the, the yield positiveness is driven by shock formation. It is, can be seen here. So yeah, so if we try to check the, the L2 norm of W1, so even though that we know that W2 norm, W1 will blow up at shock formation time, but we still want to know what would be the L2 norm of it. In a suitable space time region we construct, we can show that there will be a lower bound here. And the row one, so we know that uh, at the shock formation time, the row one will be zero. So which means this will be a function very close to zero. Okay, but how to show the lower bound? And the way we do it is we insert a quantity. This is precisely zero at the shock formation time. So which is we minus zero. And this, yeah, this is because this is zero due to the shock formation. And using the calculus lemma, Okay, so this is uh, bounded by the derivative times this one. And in our paper, we desired, we, we, we get a desired upper bound for the derivative of row one. And this will give a, a desired lower bound of this one. So which means the L2 norm of W1 will have a lower bound, which is precisely, uh, which will be precisely here. So this has a positive, uh, this have positive lower bound. And uh, this gives us infinity. So as we can see that the crucial thing is there is a shock here. It is because of the, this is quantity zero, we can insert the zero and, uh, and to have the, the divergence of the L2 now. And this will give us for elastic wave, we have the gradient of U1, the second derivative of U1 goes, um, blows up uh, instantaneously. And for the MHD, we have the first derivative of U1 and the first derivative of rho goes to infinity for the MHD. Okay, and so that is the reason why we are seeing that the yield positive mechanism, the blow up of the norm was driven by shock formation. And uh, that's everything I want to talk. Yeah, I'll say thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, uh, Doctor Xinyang, uh, as uh, excellent the uh, uh, talk. Anyone has any question or comments? Oh, uh, maybe G uh, Jim. Jim has mm -hmm. question. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah Jim, Jim may have a question, okay. But uh, Jim is, uh, is uh, muted, I cannot hear him. Okay. Hi, Jim, okay. Uh, no yeah, I can, uh, I, I, yeah, I cannot hear Jim, so. Thank you, uh, yeah. Hi, hi, James, hi, yeah. Uh, yeah, great talk, I just wonder you, uh... You exactly. work on the seems to depend, depend on uh, on three spatial dimensions. So, uh, right. what would happen to the other spatial dimensions? All right. This is a very good question. So, uh, yeah, for in, yeah for the R three. So, I think our result matched with the local well positiveness, which is somehow relatively sharp. Right. And currently, uh, 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 a good question. Okay. So yeah, okay, let's say, so, uh, so uh, currently we are working on dimension two. But for dimension two, it will be subtle, it's more subtle because uh, right. if we consider, right, in, in, two, in two special dimension, so two plus one. So because it's uh, the positive side, which is the local well positiveness, it's, it's a fractional power for the sublet component. It is not the integer. So yeah, so yeah, so we need to match. We, all, we want to match that. So it is, uh, uh, yeah, technically slightly harder than this one, but I would imagine similar kind of phenomena would be, uh, would be there. With and uh, so, yeah. With, yeah. Uh, with different values of S, for example. Right, they yeah, yeah, yeah. I would guess, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, the, the, uh, it, 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 it is not H2, it is a slightly different power, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, good. right, yeah, thanks. And uh, so here is, I think it's interesting, so, um, so yeah, so 
I think this this a uh, half gap is something quite interesting. But I think maybe there people will have a better understanding about why there is a half gap, which is there is a critical norm, which is either three over two or five over two, and also there is there is a level which with the ear poseness and the sharp uh, the I'm called ear, the the local well poseness and ear poseness. And it seems that not only for one equation, and this is for several equations, we observe this kind of phenomena. There may be something deep uh, here, but yeah, we don't know the reason. Yeah, we check case by case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you again, very nice talk. Thank you, James. Thanks, very nice to see you. Yeah, okay. Any other question? Okay. Uh... Uh, okay, can I ask a question? Uh, silly oh, sure, question. Please, yeah. Yeah. Please, yeah. Yeah, very nice talk. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh I guess you mentioned this before, but I, I think I uh I, I didn't get it. So you said like, you know, but all the equations like you know, uh they themselves like form shock, right? Even if you don't couple it to like, you know, the EM, like electromagnetism right. or uh, so oh, yeah, you what I'm wondering. So let's like, let me try to find the slides. Yeah. Yeah, you, you mentioned sure, it yeah, please, yeah. Yes, yeah. Right. I also keep the equations in the middle. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, this is this is the equation. This is for the compressible Euler equation. Right. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So if you, if you add this, you know, the if you add the magnetic field to it, electromagnetic field to that, uh, so does it make things like worse? I mean, like, so in other words, right. like you know, the, uh, what happens to the shock formation time? Does the oh, okay. time yeah. like right. yeah. this is a, this, this is this is a good question okay right so uh yeah so i also talk uh, talk with my co-author earlier this uh, yeah okay so in, in beginning time is early today with me about this issue so yeah we check that yeah so because in, in our uh, cases so we can we understand the dynamics uh quite precisely about all the, all the norms so uh the short answer is the um, so yeah, so for our regime, which is for the shock formation, we constructed the the, the H didn't change much about the shock formation time. So which is uh, right. it, 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 it only changed maybe within the order of epsilon. So uh, yeah, there it, it isn't a significant change. Yeah, I understand that physically maybe the physicist may, may think that the H may play some important role in some regime, um, but uh, not for here. And uh, right, and the shock formation time will be roughly uh, will be roughly the same, but the dynamics for the MGD will be more complicated because we will have more uh, different ways to interact with each other. This right. is the answer, yeah, yeah. So you think like this, you know, this extra, these alpha band waves, which are coming from this purely magnetic interaction, do still kind of make things worse right. in some sense? Uh, right, so, so this is also an uh, interesting question. So this is related to, let's say for the MHD, uh, th th for the picture which we just show, uh, let me see the picture. Um, this is for the, uh, I think we, let's see, there's another picture. Oh, uh, this is, sorry, uh, no, uh, this, one, this, this one, right. So yeah. um, so in our work, we, we only consider the fast way, which is either the R1, or, yeah, the our result also can be applied to R7, okay. Right. So the R wave and also the other maybe more involved MHD phenomena will be hidden here. So I would think there will be even richer structures here, but it will be more difficult to do, uh, to do the analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, so myself I would like to thank Professor Yao and, and the James to be here. And uh, it is super <laughs> nice to say. Yeah, 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 especially yeah. Oh, Professor Yao. Yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was nice really talk, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I come to visit here sometime. Oh, thank you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so if I can travel, I definitely <laughs> go to yeah. Beijing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So for me, for me, I want to say that uh, Einstein's equation is a uh, very geometric equation, which is, um, and, but, but there also will be other uh, uh, physical quadrilinear wave system, which, which also be interesting and also can be tried to understand using geometrical way. So, yeah, so I hope that in this talk, I convey the kind of idea, which is, the, yeah, so, so, so which is, uh, this is kind of parallel to the Einstein's equation. It also, there are rich physical phenomena here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's uh, very interesting. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
Good. So this will be a great talk ending this, this semester. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good night. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh, Bye. Thank, thank you very much. Bye, James. Uh, bye. 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 Take care and see you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Wake up, close window.